there are many different ways in which an engine could find itself on this end of my shop. And just because you see an engine in the background here doesn't mean it's getting torn down for parts. Sometimes engines find their way back here because they're waiting on a water neck or an oil pan or whatever it might be so that I can sell that engine complete and feel good about it. Other engines find their way back here as parts engines, whether it's a core return from a customer or I go to another salvage yard and get one of their core returns or I go to a shop or dealership and get somebody's old engine. That's how a lot of the engines wind up on this channel. But sometimes, sometimes good yards go through old inventory and you can sort your inventory by how long it's been in stock and you just throw everything away for whatever you can get for it. When I say throw it away, I'm not talking about actually throwing it in the dumpster, I'm talking about calling around and figuring out who will give you whatever you can get for it so that you make shelf space. And that's what this is. This is a 7.3 Power Stroke, one of the most requested engines on the channel. And if I'm being completely honest, I've been trying to find one. So the fact that I got one delivered, wow, great. Not great. Because this engine either has 700,000 miles on it or 70,000 miles on it. And I'll tear a 700,000 mile 7.3 down in a heartbeat, but a 70,000 mile 7.3, I'm pretty sure I'll have airstrikes at my house. We are going to play detective today. Normally we'd be tearing an engine down, trying to figure out what went wrong and what survived, but instead we're going to look at all of the information that I have. Everything that I have, I'm going to present to you guys. I am one guy at one facility. I've seen 12, 13, 14, maybe 7.3s come through the shop not a lot of data points but there are some of you that have worked on these engines for the last 25 years and i want to know what you guys think does this engine have 70k or does it have 700,000 miles on it the difference in value is humongous if it turns out that this engine has 70,000 miles on it then i owe that salvage yard a phone call and a check so i'm going to give you all of the information that i have everything that i have i'm going to present on this video. We're going to look at the VIN number. I've decoded it, so I've got the build date and the option list. I've also run a Carfax on it, which is where the huge discrepancy is. I also have a few pictures of the truck. Unfortunately, no pictures of the odometer. That would pretty much end everything. We're also going to look at the engine itself. We're going to look for some build dates on some of the parts, the condition of some of the parts, if they've been replaced or not. And maybe, maybe with all of that information, we can kind of put a puzzle back together and figure out if this engine has just 70,000 miles on it. Let's start with the biggest question. Does this engine run? Well, I'm told it did. This truck was inventoried in the first week of 2016. That means this engine's been on the shelf in a warehouse for over six and a half years. That's a long time. So it should still be okay. Should be okay. Usually when they're kept indoors, sealed up like this engine has been, it should be fine. I've seen engines sit much longer without any issues. Now, there is some damage on this engine. It was in a front end collision, which is why I know this is the same engine from the truck that they showed me. The water pump snout is broken off. Outside of that, I don't see any other crash damage to this engine. Another thing to note is that this engine came from a truck that was in Chicago. And Chicago is probably one of the worst places to be if you're a vehicle because they literally throw rock salt down six months out of the year. It's extremely corrosive, lots of rust. And I mean, it's, it's not not rusty because you can see there's, there's some peeling, flaking paint on the head there. You got to realize too that these engines like to leak. So a lot of the areas that are covered in oil won't rust, but it does have some rust over here. This is a little bit of corrosion here, but it's, it's still not awful. Normally when I buy one of these trucks out of Chicago, you can't see any paint left on the cylinder heads. So I, I don't know, not sure. Now let's look at the Carfax. So on the first page of Carfax, it, you can see that it has two previous owners, 10 service history, at least one open recall. And it had a last reported odometer reading of 697,845 miles. All of the data on the top of this is correct. Now let's go to the first page. Yes, we know it was in a total loss. Let's get to the first page. All right, in January 7th of 99, it had six miles on it. It's when the title was first issued. And then there's not 
any, not a single update with Miles until February 25th of 2013s at River Oaks Lincoln Mercury, which is a dealership. It shows 64,899 miles. Then, about a year and a half later, it has 67,675 miles at an Oil Express in South Holland, Illinois. It's an oil change place. And then, 68,000 miles, 68,372 miles, and that was just four months later, so not used very much. And then, literally from that point, just two months later, it shows 685,738,000 miles. Now, the last place it was looked at, the last place it showed miles was the dealership at 68,000, but the Oil Express place also verified that it had just 67,000 miles on it. But then, out of nowhere, that same oil place shows 685,000. And then, uh, three months later, 688. A month later, 690. And then, three months later, 697. And then, literally a month later, is when the accident happened. That's a big discrepancy. It is pretty, I haven't done the math, but I would wager that it's pretty impossible to go from 68,000 to 685,000 miles. So that is where the discrepancy is. Now, one thing to note is that a Super Duty cluster does not have a tenth digit. It does in the trip meter, but not in the odometer. At least in 99, they didn't. When I got digital, I think they did. But this is an analog one. The 99 to 01 or 02 were analog. So that's not a possibility here. But it is a possibility that someone fat fingered the odometer, and there's only one place that shows that it has 690 something thousand miles on it, whereas there are two places that show it has 67,000 or 68,000 miles on it. I, this, is, this is my conundrum here. So now here is the truck it came from. You can see it's a red extended cab with a service bed on it. Now there are three pictures of the truck, and there's a lot number from Copart on the windshield. Unfortunately, like I said, if I go to Auction IO or StatVin, it pulls no history of that auction since it was from 2015. This truck went through the auction with 699,000 miles on it, or at least that's what Copart claimed. So they wrote the mileage on the window. I cannot say with certainty that Copart always gets the mileage right. I've got a lot of vehicles from the auction where they counted the tenth digit, or they just put some random miles on it, or they looked at it too quickly. It's really hard to say, but now, if they are claiming it has 699,000 miles, which is written on that quarter glass, then I have two sources that say it has 70,000, and two sources that say it has 700,000 miles. That's why I'm in this situation. I know from decoding this VIN number that this truck was built October 28th of 1998. It's a 1999 model year, first year. It's actually in the first VIN split of the Super Duty trucks, which also means that all of the dates on this engine should be before October 28th. Anything after we find in this engine may not be original to that truck. So we're going to look at for some stickers, some dates. I think there's one on the valve cover. We may get some brake clean and try to find some other date codes. Let's see what we can find. Well, here is the sticker on the driver's side valve cover, and there is a date of October 27th, 98, which means that that sticker was applied to this valve cover or the engine when it was complete, just one day before this truck was built. That checks out. All right, I found another label on the turbo. Hopefully this doesn't go away when I do this. Okay, is there a date on there? No. But that does appear to be an original turbo. And every single 7.3 that I've gotten in here, doesn't matter how many miles are on it, if it is a low mileage engine, like a 180,000, I know you guys are laughing, or a 300,000 mile engine, I've never seen an original turbo on any of the 7.3s that I've gotten in. Next, I'm going to pull the inlet tube off the turbo. We're going to see what kind of condition that's in. Well, I don't really see any damage to the housing or the impeller. It doesn't really spin that great, but remember, this thing's been sitting for a long time. It likely has no oil in that center cartridge. 
There's no play, no excess play. And it doesn't, the wheel doesn't hit the housing. I don't know. That's an awful yet. Now this is unlikely to tell us anything crazy because it's a diesel, but we're gonna remove this driver's side valve cover and check out what the valve train looks like. I'll be the first to tell you that this isn't gonna tell us a whole lot, but there's a few things we can look for. The overall cleanliness of this engine, it is actually really clean in here. Normally diesels are really dirty, but this also doesn't have a lot of emissions equipment on it, if any emissions equipment, so maybe it's cleaner because of that. One of the things I noticed is that I can still see paint marks on the head casting. One there, one there. I don't know if that's normal or not. Another thing worth mentioning is the condition of the wire harness, which is integral to the valve cover gaskets. Now, this could have had valve cover gaskets at some point in time, and I'm sure some of you might be able to identify if it has, but this all looks like it's in really good shape. Let's pop this back on real quick. Another thing I'd like to look at is the harness. So now, this harness has been chopped up from the uh, salvage yard, which that happens a lot of times, but these connectors are usually really fragile, and this, I don't know, clips in and out pretty nice. And if you look at the condition of the sheathing too, the sheathing is really nice and it's not falling apart. I can just kind of wipe the dust off and you can see paint on it and different color tape. Let's see, is this, this is covered in oil, Let's see if this is soft. Yeah. It's, again, not a great indicator, it's just what we have. And even the, that part of the pedestal is pretty clean too. Now this yard does not power wash engines at all. This is how it was pulled out of the truck. It's a little wet down there, but it's not too bad. We have one more thing that I'd like to check. Oh my God, this is, this is not a good idea. This is bad. It's gonna be fine. Just don't, just don't look at what I'm doing and it's fine. It's the result that matters, not the process. What's the worst that can happen? Don't answer that. All right, can I get this to sit on its tail? Please? Gently? Gently? Oh my God. Oh my God, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be okay. Oh, that almost wasn't okay. It might be okay. I don't know. Oh, it's driving. That's not good. Is that better? Let's do the shake test. Hey, you know, it's only a thousand pounds and I can run pretty fast, but I think this is good. First off, these are designed to hold a bunk of plywood. I've actually put entire vehicles on these carts. So a thousand or 1100 pounds, seven, three, it's okay, I promise, it's okay. We're also only going to be pulling the pan. We're not gonna do any heavy wrenching. We're gonna get the oil filter off, pull the pan, and then check a couple bearings. If this engine actually has 70,000 miles on it, those bearings will be beautiful. And I, I don't care what kind of maintenance this engine had, if it had 700,000 miles on it, well, we'll see some wear in the bearings. First things first, let's get this oil filter off. Well. That wasn't tight. Is it gonna make a mess though? Yes, great. There we go. Mitigate the mess a little bit. Well, the oil looks like oil. 
It doesn't smell very good. But it's also been sitting in this engine for six and a half years or more. All right, now the dipstick. Well, that's why it's got low miles. It just came right out. All right, let's start zipping some bolts out of this pan. So now I trust this engine is drained because the yard that I got this from is really good about that. That doesn't mean it's drained. Now I checked with the dipstick and it said it was drained. That doesn't mean it's drained. My experience would also tell me with the amount of bolts that are out of it, it would have started leaking by now. That would mean it could be drained. That doesn't mean it's drained. One thing is certain though, once I pull this pan, it will be drained. These are glued on. very well. That doesn't mean they don't leak. Now I do want to be extra careful since if this ends up going in a good direction, and if this ends up nice, I'll be putting this pan back on. Got me there for a second. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, just a probably half a quart came out on my table. It's not too bad. I don't really worry about messes too much anymore. I'm usually the messiest person here, I think. And I'm not just saying that to make my guys happy. And plus I have all this pig mat. This stuff works amazing. Well, let's get started here. It's the moment of truth. Wasn't enough, apparently. Still wasn't enough, but. I'm trying to get this pushed up in the bore so I can roll the other bearing out because that's only half. Well, the bearings are not that great. That one's worn to the copper. That one's got some wear too. Let's give this a little bath here and see what they really look like. But well, they definitely don't like, these definitely don't look like 70,000 mile bearings to me, but I also don't work on a lot of 7.3s. So you guys, you guys would know, I won't. 70 or 700,000 miles. Because I gotta say, if that's 700,000 miles, that's pretty impressive. If it's 70,000 miles, that's also not so great. <laughs> Let's take another one out and see what this looks like. I don't know if I'm going to be able to slide that bearing out of this one though. And I don't think I can turn it over because it's sitting on the flywheel. So we're going to try some stuff. It's going to be fine guys. See, fine. It might be hard to see, but that bearing looks the exact same. It's worn down to the copper at the top. Something else we can look at is the condition of the cam and that is not great. It's definitely got some wear on that lobe. And then go down to this lobe here. 
Got some wear as well. I don't know guys, I don't know if this is a low mile engine. Well, what do we think here? Does this have 70,000 miles on it? Or does this engine have 700,000 miles on it? Personally, I was on the 70,000 mile train until we pulled the oil pan because there's a little too much wear for a 70,000 mile engine. The cam, the bearings, doesn't look like 70K to me, but it also doesn't look like 700,000 miles. There's a couple other scenarios that we haven't really considered or talked about yet, and that is the possibility that this truck got the engine replaced at some point in its lifetime. Maybe at 300,000 miles they replaced the engine, and that engine has 400,000 miles on it. Or perhaps the cluster failed or someone replaced the cluster with a used one, but that still doesn't explain the Carfax. It seems pretty odd that it would jump from 68,000 miles to 680,000 miles, and it's just, there's no 10th digit, so that, it just doesn't make sense. Just three months time. So did the dealership and the oil change place mess up and then the oil change place fixed it? People make mistakes all the time when they enter those records, so it's not a super reliable source, but it is something I like to consider when I buy cars at the auction or buy engines from other yards. I don't even know what to do with this engine. I, you know, I, I wouldn't throw it back together and sell it as a good engine without doing some work to it, but I hate to tear down a good 7.3. That just seems like a waste to me. And I don't know if this engine is good, haven't heard it run, which kind of goes against the grain for me selling motors, but at the same time, it's a 7.3. It was from a wreck truck. There's no external damage. I feel like that engine would run just fine. So tell me what I should do with this. Should I turn this into a teardown or should I save it? You guys let me know. If you'd like to buy parts off of any of those Super Duties, I usually have those in stock right now. I think I have an 0173 that runs great. I have an 07 6 liter, I know, and I have an 0864. Yeah, it, it gets worse. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's out of the norm. And as always, I appreciate all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.